Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Zach and you're watching the ZVP Show. If you wanna learn more about personal finance, how to build wealth through real estate, or how to be successful at your nine to five job, you're at the right spot. So this past week, one of my tenants moved out from one of my rental units, so I get to go through the process of screening for a new tenant to get that unit filled again. And let me tell you, screening for tenants is one of the most important things that a landlord can do. It will save you from a tremendous amount of stress as well as keep you from losing a ton of money. The average eviction costs around $3,500 and takes three to four weeks to complete. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to screen tenants correctly and effectively. This is the time when landlords have the most power and can protect themselves. Once you turn those keys over to the tenants and they take possession of the property, it takes an insane amount of effort, time, and money to evict them if they turn out to be a bad apple. But anyone who's looking to start buying rentals, managed properties, or is already doing so can prevent having to go through the pain of an eviction by doing proper screening. As a landlord and somebody who's been doing this for many years, these are some of my red flags and how I go about selecting the best tenants for my properties. The first thing that I look for when selecting a tenant is a good credit score. For the most part, I look for a credit score of 690 and above, which is considered good. With that being said, I also take this on a case by case basis and have run into people with credit scores less than 690 and they've still been great tenants and never gave me any issues. A credit report is great to be able to tell how responsible a tenant is for paying their bills and loans. A credit report will include things like credit cards, car payments, student loans, or anything that's owed in terms of debt or credit. You can tell a lot by looking through a credit report and seeing how leveraged somebody might be. If someone has three or four credit cards that are fully maxed out in other forms of financing and are behind on payments, that'll be a pretty good indicator of how fiscally responsible they are and how responsible they'll be with your lease payment. Like I said, this is a case by case basis, but if someone has a history of missed payments, judgments against them or garnishments, I will just pass. There are plenty of people out there with good credit scores looking for a place to rent. The next thing that I look for when screening a tenant is a clean background check. Like the credit report, this is kind of a case by case basis. If someone has speeding tickets or minor offenses, it doesn't really deter me from being willing to rent to someone. But much like the credit report, it tells me how responsible or irresponsible someone is. Most of the tenant screening services that I like to use give me a credit report as well as a background check at the same time. One of the better ones that I like to use is MySmartMove.com, which is owned by TransUnion, which is one of the credit reporting agencies. In some states like mine, you can do background checks for free, which is pretty nice and helps expedite the process. Some red flags for me on background checks is if they have any small claim cases against them as well as evictions. If a person has multiple small claim cases against them, that usually tells me they don't pay on time or at all. The same goes for evictions. Once somebody's passed a credit check as well as a background check, the next thing that I like to do is call the previous landlord and see if there's any information they can give me. I like to know how they were as a tenant and actually verify that they lived at the place that they listed. If someone's reluctant to put down information of who their previous landlord was, that's a little bit of a red flag to me. Many times they might give an excuse like they aren't on good terms or don't want to tell their landlord that they're moving, which is a bit sketchy to me. Essentially, if they're not willing to provide previous landlord information, they're withholding information from you to be able to make a good informed decision on whether to rent to that tenant or not. I've also come across cases where people have lied on their application and put down a number to a fake referral service that pretends to be the previous landlord. And if that's the case, I immediately toss their application. And the fourth thing, which is a little bit of a red flag, is if someone's wanting to move in right away. It's important to understand why they're looking to move and why they're wanting to move in so quick. Sometimes it's for an understandable reason, like they didn't have time to find a new place and their lease is up. And that's fine as long as it's true and you can verify it by calling their previous landlord. But there are some people that are in the process of being evicted or forced out of their last place and need someone to move into immediately. And they will try to bypass parts of the screening process to do so. Some people might flash large sums of cash or offer to pay three to six months of rent in advance as long as they can move in right away without any screening. This throws up major concerns for me, but I know many people have fallen for this trick and it doesn't end up well. And the last thing, trust your intuition. If you don't feel good about the prospects of renting someone, go with your gut feeling. Even if they check off all the other boxes and seem to check out as a person, if they make you feel uneasy for some reason, trust it. One of my worst tenants was someone who had a pretty solid credit score, passed the background check, and the previous landlord vouched for him. 
When I initially showed them the property, I didn't feel great about it, but since they passed everything else, I rented to them anyways. They would call me in the middle of the night complaining about internet speeds or things that aren't really related to the property being an issue. Then after four months of living in the property, they tried to breach their year long lease agreement and it turned out to be a huge headache for me. Usually your intuition will pick up on things that a logical approach will not. So be sure to trust your gut. So here are some of my requirements for renting to a person. Their income must be at least three times what they pay for rent. This is pretty common in most of the industry. So if I'm renting a place for $1,000, they must make $3,000 a month. Additionally, I like to verify their income either through bank statements or talking with their employer. As mentioned before, I like a credit score of 690 and above. Once again, this is a case by case basis, but a person's credit score is a great indication of how fiscally responsible that person is. They also need to have a clean background check. Speeding tickets and other small infractions don't really matter much to me, but if they have an eviction or any small claim cases against them, that's an immediate no from me. And last but not least, speak with the previous landlord. This is an additional point of verification and usually that previous landlord can give you pretty good information on their experience with that tenant. I will say that my overall experience renting properties has been positive. And there are far more great tenants out there than there are bad ones, but there still are some bad ones. Using all the advice from before, you can weed through those bad apples and find great tenants, so you have a good and easy experience. It's worth the extra work to do the proper screening process to fill your rentals with great tenants, and you'll thank yourself later for it. As always, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you found it useful, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I release content every week.